People have to know he was an amazing player, an amazing winger. Thank you. You were a good player. You have to be proud of it. Who for you was the biggest skillful player you saw? Paolo Di Canio. Ah, oh, Messi. If you have to create one-on-one -on -one in that pitch with the two players. Puyol against Ronaldinho. Welcome to Podball, the highest podcast in the world. In today's episode, I have two special guests. Special because, you know, they have so many... Tell you. One. Huh? One guest special. Ah, one guest special? <laughs> one guest special and one super guest. <laughs> okay, so let, let's introduce, introduce the first special guest. Bakari, introduce yourself. Hi, guys. This is Bak. I'm here for Podballs. I'm here for Sean. And we are going to discover a lot of things. Okay. And the second guest? This is me, Youssef Sofian. Same thing. I'm here for my... Uh, I met here and we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna have some fun. Yeah guys, the, the funny thing is we are uh, three guys, but we were three kids who play in the same club, Auxerre, and we had three different directions. And from the same place we explore explored the life to get in a different way. And now we are uh, all together. I want to go more deeper in this conversation. Bakari. How was your uh, life as a football player? What is to be a football <laughs> player on a daily basis? People think oh, to, me. <laughs> to be a football player in time. Oh, to me, it's a fantastic life. It's the best job in the world. Uh, you get to train a bit. Uh, you get to collect all the efforts you put for so many years. And of course, people give you this back and uh, you give it back to people by playing well and, and trying to be good as long as possible. And uh, to me, it's the best job in the world. And uh, if everyone could, uh, could feel how we feel as a football player to be in the middle of the pitch and to feel the atmosphere as it happens now with the World Cup, it would be amazing. Wow. Yes. You, are also, you were also a football player. Yeah. Now you're more like an agent. Yeah, so now, now you know, I've hung out my boots quite early, 30 years old. I would say I had lost, lost the passion for football. You know, fire, fire desire had gone. Um, and yeah, I decided to go on the other side, other side of, uh, of the business. Um, interesting side. Obviously, there's a lot of things uh, as a football player that we don't know. But yeah, it's something today that I've got a passion for. I love it. Um, it enables me to, to travel the world, to be with uh, some of the biggest athletes you know, in the industry and in uh, the club. So yeah, it's something that I really enjoy today. What makes you lose the passion for football? You know what I would say, and that, that's something, it's, um, it's an advice that, you know, obviously as a football agent now, I'm looking after young players and all of that, and it's, I say, your, your circle, the people around you, the people around you, it's so important. Um, I was fortunate, you know, we were all together in, in the academy. I had my path, you know, played in the national team in France, signing at West Ham, you know, everything was pretty straightforward for me, motorway kind of. And then, yeah, you got all the sharks coming when you don't have the, the right people behind you, you know, speaking to this agent, speaking to this agent and starting moving club after club. And, um, that, that's kind of what I would say what damaged my, uh, my football career. You know, there is a lot of kids who want to make it as a professional uh, everywhere in the world, in, the, in Europe, but also Africa, South America. Uh, you know, I was shocked when I went to Nigeria and I see on the bridge maybe 50 players uh, training. I went there and I asked them, what do you want to do? Why are you training at 6 a.m. in the morning? I said, no, we want to make it as a professional. So I thought there is no way for them to, 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 be, to be a professional. Super hard. What's the best advice you can give uh, back to, to those kids who really want to make it? And what makes you did the difference back then? Yeah, I think you have said it. You need to surround yourself the best way possible. You need to be wise and learn from mistakes all the players produce, you know, you need to be able to, to understand advices, the good advices, you have to be wise and not having ego. Ego most of the time kills a player, you know, one player thinks knowing everything, he doesn't listen advice from the coach, he doesn't listen advice from his family, but he will be listening advice from someone who doesn't care about him, from agent and people surrounding themselves. So. First of all, you need to be clever. You need to analyze whenever you're good and whenever you're not good. You need to be able to get the feedback, positive ones, and accept the negative one. It hurts to have negative feedback, 
but it's only for your well-being. If you want to be able to progress every day, you need to take the negative feedback and try to work on it. So for my part, I was just getting everything slowly, taking step, uh, step by step. And whenever the coach was coming to me and having feedbacks, I was trying to correct myself. I didn't do anything special, just listening to, to the feedbacks. And whenever I had to work for one hour and 30 minutes, I was really working for one hour and 30 minutes. You know? I was late regarding skills, uh, agility, everything, because I didn't have pre-academy. So I knew I was late and I had to catch back. So every training session for me was a way maybe to get close to these guys because these guys were training maybe one or twice a day. Until 15, I was training once a week, which is nothing, you know. But eventually with work, you manage to be okay and you manage to cash back. You know, I wish I had a pre-academy because offensively, I think I could have done better. But I'm still pleased with the way I did. And, uh, and yes, it would be the best advice. Just focus on yourself. Whenever you train, focus 100%. You will have time to laugh, have joke with your friend or talk later. You need to be maximizing this time because today's training session, for example, is gone. And for the kids, they have to understand every time they miss one training session, it's one less chance. That reduces the time for them to be able to be maybe one of the professional player. you know? It's like you have to, to repeat till you get it, right? And uh, when you, you don't take the time to to practice, you basically waste your time. Totally and waste time, time is the thing you cannot get back, right? You know, a career goes super fast, you know. I'm 39 today and it seems like I signed for Arsenal yesterday. I still remember exactly what happened and how it happened. How? <laughs> oh, <wait>. Come on. <laughs> You're good, huh? <laughs> I didn't expect your question. <laughs> you give me the, the past. I control. <laughs> No, I was in also uh, in uh, in Oxe, you know we were by you know Oxe, and uh, I play regular for three years. Season 2006, uh, I was part of uh, under 21. We played the European Cup in Portugal, and I did an amazing tournament. So the following season, I think Arsenal sent seven different people to check my games. They came to every single game and to have different feedback. And at the end of season, my agent contacted me saying that they were keen on playing me. I went on holiday, but the club didn't want to let me go. So for two months, I was on the phone with the president. Uh, he gave me a hard time. I used to go beach with my phone and I was a bit stressed. But eventually one day he just called me and said, okay, this weekend you go to Arsenal. So I went back home, I packed two luggage and I, I just went, you know, I didn't have time to think because it happened so fast. And, uh, and I stayed one month before I came back to get my, uh, my clothes and everything. But important months. I stayed in hotel and this is where I had the team bonding because we went in preseason in Austria. Uh, I signed at the same time as Eduardo, you know, the one who got injured. So we, we stick together for one month. We were together always. And then we had a fantastic season the first year. So coming to England and coming to Premier League to a French friendship club for me was a key point because my English was okay back then. But not perfect so i was speaking half half french and, and english so to adapt it went it went very smooth it was easier you 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 was a football player you play some of the best club in uk you also connect with uh, some of crazy player because you play for the french national team when you were young you were one of the most promising players when uh, we were on the academy in Auxerre. now you are an agent and you see the other side as you said what the, the young football player doesn't know and what can help them to package themselves better to succeed in football? Because now you have both expertise as a player and as an agent. Because sometimes we see people that approach players as an agent, but they don't have any good background or any good uh, intent for them. What you could advise them? Honestly, I'll come back to what I said. Your surrounding is it's key. Because you can have all the talent in the world, but if you've got people that are just going to want to see just one thing, just want to take advantage, it's very bad. But then I would say, you know, work, hard work. There's no, there's no miracle. This is the, this is, yeah, this is the key. If you work hard, it will pay off. So as a young player, you need to do more than the others. And because 
especially now in football, everyone wants to play football. And how many spaces do you have? There's not that many. Us, when we, when we go back to the academy in Oxe, we were 60, 70 kids in the academy. How many makes it? Two? But yeah, I mean, it's not even, it's not even 5%. So, you know, it's actually, you know what, it's the one that really, really want the most, then we'll get it. And um, yeah, you need to just have the, the right people around you. And, and today is scary because at our time, it used to happen when we were 18, 19, 20 years old. This is where you start breaking into the first team, start playing football, and then you've got, I'll call them the Sharks. Obviously, all the agents trying to, to come and, you know. Are you a shark? There. I'm not a shark, I'm a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good shark. I'm a good shark. <laughs> good shark. Good. Um, but um, now, honestly, now, now they go after kids that are 12, 13, 14 years old. Honestly, it's for me now, being on, on the other side, obviously, I'm not going to go into all the details, but it's, you know, it hurts. Obviously, I'll always try to do my job the best way possible to help them because I've been a player. I've been at the top and, you know, I've been at the lowest and I managed to bounce back. So I've got that, you know, that experience in, in football that gives me that to give back to the players. So, you know, when I give advice, it's not just to, I'm not seeing my, um, what am I going to get from it? It's really just try to listen to my advice because I actually don't want you to get done. And football is a business today. Football is a business and they just want to get, you know what, the best player possible, sign them wherever they can sign them, get them on there and then that's it. So, um, yeah, just work hard. As a kid, just work hard. You need, to, you need to believe in yourself. You need to have, dream big, dream. You have to, you know, put yourself a target and, um, and yeah, have the right people around you. Now you, yeah, you just come back from the training. You have an academy in Dubai. We right? do, yeah, Bowlers Academy. Bowlers Academy, you, ki you teach kids. Might, you will see some kids emerge from this region, maybe go with them. If you see a kid um, and he's almost going to make it, but you feel it's, it's going to be hard for him, what do you tell him to do? You tell him to go back to study, you tell him to make content creation, you tell him to fight for his dream. How you approach that? Because it's, it's not black and white, I will say. It's always gray zone. How you approach that thing? I believe you can do both at the same time. Because if you think back, you only train hour and a half a day. You have plenty of time to maximize your time and, and study. You can study online. You have all the tools, all the platform to learn and educate yourself. So most of the, pi most of the time, the kids, unfortunately, they stop at 15 years old. They start going to school, but they forget about what is it. Only a few of them make it. Out of 100, maybe one will make it. So what about the others? You need to be wise and anticipate what's next. One day they will be stopping football. They still need to be educated because they might have money, but you need to be smart and know how to use the money and how to invest. And education plays a big part in it. And even playing, and this is probably something I will change. In my career, I know we were busy because we used to play every three days, Champions League. But when I think back, how many hours we spent in hotel, in planes, in uh, tra training facilities, whenever we have two training sessions. You have one in the morning, one hour and a half, one afternoon. So you have a lot of spare time to... I'm not telling you you need to study all this time, but out of five hours, you have maybe one hour to study and educate yourself. So. I believe you can be doing both. I want to tell the parents to push the kids to study. You can be the best player and still learn, you know. And, and fortunately, you have some players who are doing NBAs now. Uh, NBA players, they, they're all studying at the same time and they receive certificate. You have more and more football players, but only now they realize. And I wish, of course, I studied. I was lucky to study because my dad was behind me. One more time, my entourage was good. So my dad pushed me to study and I graduated. I went to uni, all of that. It's a blessing because if I ever want to go back to school, now I have my certificates to be able to go back to school. But most of them, they don't have anything. So if you don't make it as a player, as a poor, as a poor player, or if you get injured, what do you do? You know? Do you think um, now study, the tra traditional way to study is... Uh only the right way or you can like educate yourself as you said with the tools online and if you have to do that just with the tool 
which direction we will advise the youth to go? Like what, what skill do you think is important to learn? Is it like a business skills, finance, content creation, marketing? What for you it's the most important nowadays outside of being a good athlete? Look, I'll go back to what Bakary said. I think, I think the challenge today um, for every player, and that's what I'm, I'm really focused on, it's as a player, like you said, you focus on your career and playing football. And you think, I'm going to play football 10 years, 15 years if I'm lucky, and then I will see what comes. And then I will prepare myself for, for the next life. That's too late. You know, as a football player, what you should do, it's you play your football and start building your après, après life, I would say. Your, while you're playing football. So like this, when you reach to a certain age, you know, 30, 32 years old, you know, 34, whatever, you decide to stop, you've got something to go into it. Because the scariest thing for a football player is when you stop playing football and you're not prepared. Now, when you're not prepared, what is difficult? Is like the financial part or is more like you've been busy for so long and when you have nothing to do, you become mon not mental depressed, but I will say like, you know, when you are, uh, you, you educate yourself to go every week playing, training. So you don't have nothing to think about apart, like just be the best version of yourself on the pitch. But after you have nothing and you feel lost or how is the life after the football? No, it depends. Most of the players are having problems to adapt to the new life. Uh, you have to stay grounded. You have to bear in mind you're playing. You have all the fans behind you. You have all this shiny life. But one day it comes to the end. So if you're grounded and if you know how to live on a daily basis, you don't have any problem to adapt. The only thing I would say is you have a lot of energy. Usually you spend that energy during training sessions. You have a good pressure. From one day to another, you have too much energy. And you have a lot of time because no one will come and kick you to wake you up if you decide to wake up at 11, for example. That has to come from yourself. You have to go and get things done. You have to, to grind, as you say. But if you don't have the tools to grind, you're going to be lost and you're going to waste your time. You're going to waste your money. You're going to have the, the wrong investment, maybe. Because people will approach you and make you believe everything can, can be done easier, in an easy way. They will make you invest in some businesses and will tell you, okay, in, in two years, I give you three times, four times. It's not rocket science. Everyone will be doing it if that was so easy, you know? You need to sweat. And we were talking yesterday with our friend. You need to be sweating to get your money and to get your business. It doesn't come and it doesn't fall from the sky, you know? But unfortunately, many people, they want an easy life. They want to make money easy. They want to be to the top easily, no. It's a daily grind. You have to work really hard to get things done, you know? And kids, they have to bear this in mind. If you want to be professional, you have to start every single day. Not only on the pitch, but off the pitch, you need to watch out your diet. The rest, you need to sleep if you want to be able to recover. You want to party? Fine. You have time to party, but not too much. You know, I'm not going to say don't party. This is not what I'm saying. You need to be smart. You have time to party. And watch out on your diet, because what you're doing today might have an impact, not tomorrow, but in one month. That will catch you back for sure. First, you think you're fine. You'll party tomorrow. Oh, no, I feel good. You know? One month later, you cannot run fast. You start getting injured. Uh, you're sleepy all the time. You feel heavy. This is what you've been doing one month previously that catch you back. And that always catch you back. Some players, they get injured now. And we're complaining. Oh, he's still young. He gets injured. But how was he living years ago? You know? And there is no secret. You don't see Ronaldo getting injured. Why? It's the full package. It's, it's the full focused. package, honestly. You but have to. I think nowadays the kids, they, they understand that, especially because of Ronaldo also, it's one of the players who inspired the most people to be more healthy, more conscious about the body. So for sure now there is education. But what actually, for me now, it's the problem. There is so many information and uh, lack of, Precise information. Like we know we have to sleep. I we got know you, it's coming. <laughs> ah, tell us more about that. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah? I like what you're saying because we've been working on a project, an app, where you can direct kids regarding the training session. So individual training sessions collectively for the coaches, for the parents, they can educate themselves because we'll be talking about the contracts. They will understand football life. They will understand and be able to protect their kids. 
uh, you're going to have yoga sessions and every, everything will be mentored. So basically using artificial intelligence, depending on how you will be training, the diet will apply to the session and so on, you know. So we've been working for two years now and that's supposed to make everyone's lives easier. You know, they will just have to follow on a daily basis the content, post, and then hopefully they will, that will help them, you know. That will help them to, to get information we didn't get. Because one more time, we got lucky. I personally got lucky because my dad found one ex-agent, Pap Diouf, one who passed away, bless him. He picked up the phone. What about if he didn't? And I spoke that day to someone else. That was not so straight. I'm sure my life would have been different. I was lucky enough and blessed enough to meet the right person at the right time. Many of my colleagues, my teammates were not that lucky and met wrong people. And these wrong people led them to leave the club that had trust in them because the people had their own benefits with them. So they pushed the kid back. And if you don't take the right decision at the right time, it can change your whole life. And opposite way, if you stick to the right person, that can take you far. And this is what we are going to try to do with the app is to guide these kids, guide these coaches and guide the parents. So you're building a tool who can like helping and to solve all the problem we were like explaining kind of moment and try to yeah to educate to give some direction to the young generation for them to be less lost kind of kind of with the new technology and financially also unfortunately not everyone can afford paying a personal coach not everyone can afford to pay a personal yoga teacher a personal chef a personal lawyer to tell them what to do and how to do it We want this app to be able and useful for everyone. So regarding the market, the market price will be affordable for everyone because we want to be touching the maximum of kids because this is what we want. We want to be able to help anyone, you know, no matter where you are, Asia, Africa, South America, you will be able to get all the good information at a cheap price. This is the idea behind it. Wow. I don't think all the players think like that and like try to give back to to the youth, which is uh, really nice. And I think uh, I know you guys since a long time. I know how is your mind and uh, I, I super, I'm super happy and uh, exciting to see the project. When do you think you're going to be launched? <laughs> uh, It still needs some touch and work. Some I legal think. points. You know? yeah, for sure, we, for sure. We're there, we're there with the app. Everything now it's Oh, yeah. And I think this is what is it's super cool in the, when you launch a new project, there is many gray zones where you don't know or you have your idea, but for sure, is it going to be this color or this color? Is it going to be the video like this or like that? Yeah. You have the same thing with the one-on-one -on -one and urban ball fight. You know, you see if you saw me starting in London, the first qualifier, we went to, to London and it was like, okay, let's find a pitch. Like, uh, yeah. And we have to, the, the pitch was closed, the, the door was closed. We have to climb over the, the pitch to, to access. And now we are on the top of Dubai with the best street football pitch in the world. And it took us many time, it took us many. But one more time, you're a hard worker. That didn't fall from the sky. Yeah, for sure. We know you from young, you were an amazing player. People have to know he was an amazing player, an amazing winger. Thank you. <laughs> you were a good player. Yeah, he was destroying huh? red backs. He was. You have to be proud of it. Unfortunately, you had an injury, but you didn't choose the easy way. You went on the street, you, you taught yourself. You know, you were, you were hungry to learn about skills. And then you took it seriously. You were hungry to go and participate to championship. And then you became world champion. There is one thing. Um, now you talk about that. Um, when I was playing football and we were in the academy, I couldn't take I couldn't take it when the coach don't understand me. So for me I was skillful enough and good enough to play. And when I see the training session I was like, "Oh, how oh, this guy take my place? There's no way. I'm I'm better, like skillful, you know, I'm better." And and when I realized it was over for me as a football player, when I start freestyle, I actually start from scratch and I remove this mentality of like Oh, I'm the best, or I, the coach don't know, I know. 
And that's how I succeed in freestyle. That's what I changed. And I remember really one time I was performing on the street and one of my teammates from Troyes, because after Rosé, I went to Troyes. Troyes. I don't know how to say in English. Troyes, Troyes. Troyes, Troyes. Yeah. Troy, yeah. yeah. So Troy, yes. he was in front of me. I was doing the street show. I was doing like some moves. And he watched me like, what you doing on the ground? But I was so convinced by, okay, I'm going to succeed with these skill things. I don't know. But I will, I will succeed. I just have to put this hard, hard work. I don't know where that's going to bring me, but... And now I'm super pro to be able to launch a project, you know. How many hours of training session? To be honest, the first year, or the first three years to be world champion, it was not even training. It was like just hang out with the ball and play with people. But it was like six to eight hours every day. Good. And and also that's something I realized. Like when we, we train football, we train so intense. But sometimes we train intense for nothing. You know, we train intense, intense, but you don't go to the basics. You don't train the normal passes. You don't train the normal control. You don't train just the turning, you know. And sometimes you don't need to train with, in, like, to be intensive. You just need to teach you your brain how to move. And after that, once you know the movement, that's where you can go to, you know, more, more hard work and more intensivity. And that's how I learned. I learned the first tricks, okay, the second tricks. Then... Once I got the tricks, I start to put uh, rhythm into it. And that's how I become good with the ball because I had more rhythm with good trick, right? And talking about skills, so you, you saw me when I was young, but I'm sure you saw other talents. Who for you was the biggest skillful player you saw in academies or when you were professional or as an agent? Or what? To me, I would say obviously someone that I played with, let's say when as a football player i don't think he was the most skillful but the player where i was just like every time like actually every day training just seeing him was paulo di Canio. oh it's it just had something magical because the guy wasn't fast um he had the basic technique i would say gosh go and try to take the ball out of his feet and everything that he was doing was you know it was almost like slow motion was always going through to me it was honestly it was yeah the best player i played with and potentially one of the best player yeah i've seen can you and one of can... the most controversial player on the pitch right paulo di Cagno is a he's a fan guy so this is this is you know when i've seen everything that happened after it and i understand him like when i i got to west ham he was actually the one that put his arm around me and you know was guiding me so paulo di Cagno um needed to be fed by the fans so wherever he's going to be, if the fans are on his side, he's got a fantastic player. If the fans are not on his side, so everything that happened at Lazio, when they were saying, oh, this, this happened, Paolo Di Canio is not a fascist, you know. He's just a good guy, but he needs the fan on his side. I got it. I got it. And you back? A few who put me on the floor, so... <laughs> <laughs> Messi. Messi? Ah, oh, Messi. Messi, Messi's brain is super fast. He can adapt to any situation. I don't know how he does it, to be honest. Because any situation that presents to him, he will get away with it. I don't think he knows how he does it as well, to be fair. Just, just it's just natural. super fast. You know, the way he, th he thinks is like he can see everything on the pitch. And he analyzes before he receives the ball, which is very important. But when he has a ball on the feet, you know, he is managed to get away from you. And I think he analyzes your feet whenever you defend. So he's focused on the ball, what's around him, but on your feet and your body position. So he will always go against you, against your body position. So technically, you cannot do much because this is every human being who are defending the same or running in one kind of position. He will use this position against you. You know, he's very clever and very wise. He always analyzes people's position or, or maybe proximity. If you're close, he'll find a way to get away from you. Get the ball and receive the ball midway, you know. He will never stick to you. He will always be in between thinking, oh, here I can receive the ball, turn and attack them and get speed. And he's super clever, you know. He's just... Do you think he's conscious about his talent or is just like natural or it works with the time? 
like he has a special strategy for, for, for me, for example, if I have to dribble someone, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I know I have, a, I have many plans and I switch the plan based on you. The thing is think like that or he don't think and everything is like, it's like that. Look, for me, I think Messi, yeah, he's gifted. And um, when he plays, I think he's already five, six seconds ahead of everyone. He already knows before even you've seen it or you know the next play, the next action, he just knows it. So, um, yeah, Messi to me is gifted. Um, if you take Ronaldo, the, the, the next big one, Ronaldo is a hard worker. So Ronaldo got where he is today through hard work. We see Benzema today through hard work. Messi, does he work as hard as them? No, we all know that. Messi is just, just gifted. God gave him something and um, yeah, he's just, he's just natural. It's in him. Did you see the last pass? Yeah, the pass. <laughs> the eye. Yeah. The World Cup. Yeah. yeah in the World Cup. Yeah. You, you, you said this. You know already know which pass it is. Yes. If you see in slow motion, it's it's crazy because he drives the ball, but knowing. At what moment you think he knew that he's before like he, he felt it before he received the ball, like or he before he received the ball? Of course. You know he will make his way to help other players from his to, to help his teammates. He knew by running one way, he will attract players with him and create a space. He knew. And if I was, if I was his teammate, it would be difficult for me to anticipate his mind because no one can read it. You know? Him, I believe Neymar and Luis Suarez, they were forming a fantastic attack because they couldn't understand each other. Is Luis uh, Suarez, Neymar and Messi the best attack uh, trio yeah, in the world? It was, it was, by far. <laughs> it, was. it was fire. At time. It was. At that time, it was. And uh, yeah, they could do anything with the ball. Do you think Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe is, is better or not? No. The connection is not the same. Fantastic players individually, but the connection is not the same. And you can feel it on the pitch. The MSN was. Any, any, any attack was a danger. Because Luis Suarez were at, that, at the top of his form at this time. Neymar was doing some Neymar, you know. Whenever he was playing and respecting football, he's you cannot stop. Why you say respecting football? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you know, you have to respect the momentum of the game. Okay, so when someone doing like something not useful, is not respect. I want to know, I want to know. It is different. Okay. I don't like, me, I like players that keep the ball when you are supposed to get the ball. Maybe you're not going to lose the ball, but you might waste one chance to score because the space is not the same anymore. And this is where Kevin De Bruyne is super and clever. When he has to play one touch, he'll play one touch. If he has to keep the ball and play two touch to open the space, he will do it. He always picks the right decision at the right time. This is one of, it's one of the best, you know. Well, he will be moving. His position. He is. And what about Ronaldinho then? Because this guy was not respecting football in that way. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but do you think he he achieved his top? No. Might be why he didn't reach, because he has a lot more, and I think today he could still play against anyone, because the player himself, you know, it's <laughs> something something different. He has out of this world technically. But with the team, was he as important as he could have been? I don't think so. He was an amazing player, but he could have been the best player in the world. Because every situation, every time he touched a ball, it was you know, something different. We had a smile watching him playing football. Because he was making fun of everyone. But sometimes he could have maybe more, be more efficient. Be more decisive, giving the ball or even scoring, shooting. But he always made fun of people by not making or he was doing what you were doing on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You play against Ronaldinho? I didn't. Thank God. I you play because <laughs> left uh, attacker versus no, right. I would have been on him as well. Yeah. 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 I would have been on all. How are you different? How are you different against Ronaldinho? If you have to face him, what, what's, your, what's your strategy? Ah, I'm injured. I'm yeah. Do <laughs> you do that? <laughs> That's a good one. I think I'll try to get as close as possible. As close as possible? Yeah. He's fast, but you I can think take... I was faster. So 
I wouldn't leave space behind my back because if he starts running, I would be maybe catching back. I don't know. You play against Mbappé. You think uh, Walker did a great job versus Mbappé? No. No? Why? Did he lose many balls, Mbappé? No. Okay, being a defender, you have to go attack, not just stand and face. You need to be aggressive. You know? Don't give space. Mbappe, whenever he had the ball, he started pushing the ball. He didn't lose it. And he was 60% of his capacity. 70%. And England had a plan against Mbappe. They say, oh, Mbappe is not England against Mbappe. It's England against France. But I saw them defending two, three players against Mbappe. So it was England against Mbappe. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't play. They didn't play. They were complaining after after the game. They had two penalty, justified. But what what else do they want? They just face a better team. That's it. You need to be fair play and accept. Could have been another foul. It was not penalty on on the hurricane. It was a foul, hundred percent. But it's not a penalty. It's outside the box. But apart from this, they didn't create nothing. They didn't. Get any any chance? Will Arikan take the second penalty? I'm not sure. I don't know what you think about that. But knowing Loris is the playing I with think him, me personally, that that's what I was saying. Listen, the teammates, they probably, you know, take penalties at training. You know, so obviously Loris knows him. So the first one he took it inside, like he always does, and I think this is what what happened. That starts, you know, going into your head. He knows me. Do I keep it there? Do I change? And I thought. It's a mind I'm game. I'm gonna go with it's power. A mind game. Yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna go with power, and yeah, thanks, thanks for us. But France was the bad team. Simple as that. What's make France having those many talented players? Why France has always like crazy players, and now it's like one of the best team in the world for a while, not just like one year or two years. The system, the system we have in place that's been that's been there for for many years. Obviously, we've got fantastic players just. Playing on the street, that's it's like in Brazil, it's cultural in France. You know, as a young as a young kid, you, you just go out on the block and just play with everyone. You know, all we needed was a ball. And then you're there from uh, 10 o'clock in the morning until, uh, you know, 9 p.m. So already in terms of skill and all of this, you start on the street. Then, you you know, if you're lucky enough, you play in the club and then you get spotted, you go into the academy. Once you go to the academy, to me, to this day, France has the best, the best system for the academy. And, and, and I would say you start, you go at 14 years old, you come out at 18 years old. You might not make it in that academy, but you come out as a, as a professional. You can make it somewhere else. So we have, we have the best system for me in France. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, and uh, I think the reputation is there, the result is there, and uh, it's evolving also. Um, if, if France win the World Cup, that's going to be pushing France to maybe you know, in the ranking of Brazil or, you know, this team was like always, always in the, in the, in the end. And you mentioned something really interesting, like we as a kid play street football. How do you think skills and street football is important for the best player in the world or the football player? You know what I would say? It's like, it's like instinct, you know, forming yourself on the street, you know, with your friend doing all those tricks and all of that. It's, I think it's fundamental before going into it. It will just help you. Uh, but at the end of the day, once you go to the academy, you might not have all those skills because me, I was a player and actually I wasn't that technical. I was just very powerful, fast, and I focused on the basics, you know, just, you know, how to push a ball and, you know, cross and try to score. Um, so, yeah, forming yourself on the street, having all those skills, of course, today, especially the football have evolved. It's a new era. That, that's what you see step overs, all of this, all of those, you know, because they see it, they see you doing your tricks and everyone wants to reproduce that. So I think for the young generation, it's pretty good to, to be able to develop on the street. Yeah. I'm not helping the, the coach because I'm doing all these tricks and maybe I influence the kids to, to use the ball and dribble too much. And, you know, sometimes I hear coach say, yeah, but you have to pass the ball, you know, doing those tricks will not help you on the pitch. And I agree sometimes, but how I see football for me is like, it's like a war. If you have different weapons, you might be better. If you have one, only one or two weapons, it's difficult because you might be predictable. 
Oh. And and if you have like, if you have, and you if you apply your weapon really well, it can work for you. But if people can predict you, sometimes you might be stuck and you don't have creativity. And creativity is key because you have always different situation. The ball comes from here, from here. The pressing is always different. So if your mind cannot like create, it's hard sometimes to to go out. Look at you. You were playing forward when you were in academy. Then someone asks you to to play uh, defender. Defender. So your mind has to, has to create. Had to create. You have to be creative in a way. Or apply a certain thing you not used to apply every single day because you used to score goals. And yeah. now you have to stop someone. But maybe the fact you are scoring goal, you know the psychology of someone in front of you. Probably, it probably help. And I agree with what you're saying because if someone is good at dribbling, if I was a coach, I would push the kids to be to be able to dribble and, and take responsibility. And this is what Barcelona has been doing with Iniesta and Xavi. They were good at dribbling no matter where, where you are on the pitch. No matter the zone where you find yourself, you have to be able to deal with the pressure. But by doing it small, they got used to it even in real life. And when they face biggest players, you know, whenever they play, they play like if they play in a garden, but only because they were pushed to play this way. And they were pushed to dribble and they were pushed to pass the ball and, and, and take responsibility in different area, you know. And Kimmich, Kimmich is the same. Whenever he has a ball, he's, he's doing it for free. And, Mbappe, he has a ball and he, he provoke all the time. Uh, San Maxima is the same player, and you need. I love San Maxima, and you need that diversity in the game. Uh, everyone knows City style of play now, and everyone stay at the back. But when they stuck, you need one player who can change the game by himself. He can provoke and create something different. Yeah, that for sure. And uh, I think creativity and diversity is, is key in football. And I will ask you a last question before going to the challenge part of the podcast. If you have to create one on one in that pitch with the two players, professional players, and create like a buzz, except Messi and Ronaldo, because this is too easy, who do you put in this pitch? Any time? Well, it food. has to be now a current player or? Any time. I would say one old school game and one current player game. Old school Adonada, game? Obviously. Thank you. My, I don't know, no? It's your choice. My choice, yeah. Mine will be Puyol against Ronaldinho. Ah, I like this one. Because <laughs> you have a crazy defender who is very aggressive and you have a crazy guy who can do anything with the ball. So that would be very interesting because Puyol doesn't set back. He, defend, he defends going forward. And Ronaldinho obviously he likes taking like on people and, and trying to, to kill people. So that would be a, surely a, a nice game. That's a li I like this one. And for you, Uh, stay with Maradona. Maradona. Yeah. And um, I'd want him to destroy uh, Rio Ferdinand. Ooh, Rio. <laughs> that, that, that's one. Rio, if you watch this video, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maradona will take you on, bro. Yeah, Who yeah. will win then? Maradona. Maradona? Yeah, yeah. And for your game? I'll go for Puyo. I, th I think in that game, if you don't know how to defend in one-on-one, -on -one, it's really hard to win. That, that's what I want to do. I want to build the, the MMA of football. So the, the way is like, I want to educate players to be able to do everything. I want them to dribble. I want to be, them to be physical. And I want them to be good in defense. And you remember when we were doing the session when it was the one-on-one. -on -one. Like uh, you have one queue, you go offense, and the other queue go defense. You, the defender passed the ball to yeah, the offense. Yes, yes. And it was a shame if you like get put on the floor and stuff like that. So when you are offensive, if you miss, it's fine. But if you are a defender and you, you, the guy pass you, is the, is the shame, right? So that's why being a defender is really important. Even though me, I'm not a really good defender. When I play against someone one-on-one, -on -one, in my mind, it's like, this guy cannot pass me. I need to, I need, I need to take responsibility. It was a good uh, discussion. Before the end of the podcast, I need to give you one challenge. We build an urban ball game. So it's going to be uh, three different uh, modes. The one-on-one -on -one mode, where we create the NFT of all those talents. Uh, that's going to be released in February. We have the freestyle mode, which is going to be released really soon. And we have the trick shot mode. And the trick shot mode is released right now. We have $10,000 competition prices. If you are on the top of the leaderboard at the end of this competition, you get the $10,000 for a charity of your choice. So we will bring the game into the podcast. You start. You have one minute back. So during this one minute, we're going to ask him some questions. So back, who won the last Champions League? 
Uh, Real Madrid. Tell me five Arsenal players. Five names. Now? Yeah. Odegaard, uh, Enketia, uh, Gabriel, uh, Robert Pires, Martinelli, and uh, Ben White. Tell me five players from Manchester City. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne, uh, who else? You lose time, bro. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin De Bruyne. Uh, what's his name? I forgot. I cannot focus on. I'm not multitasking. He's not multitasking. He can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good training, bro. I know. I know. Uh, Ederson. I would say Pep Guardiola. Okay. <laughs> we take it. We take it. <laughs> And uh, Alland. Who will win the World Cup? Done. You cannot disturb me. I'm not multitask. I cannot do this. 4,480. Every guest got to do this, uh, this thing, this thing, shooting, this, shooting. this, this thing. Back, I let you think about some crazy question we can ask him to disturb him because you don't want him to beat you, right? Come let's on. go for the challenge. Okay, who won the Ballon d'Or this year? Um, Benzema. And last year? That was uh, Messi. Okay. Who won the? Uh, who was facing uh, Real Madrid in the uh, Champions League final? Uh, Champions League final. They played against. Oh, I was gonna say PSG and Mars. Oh, I don't remember. I don't know who they played against Madrid. Come on. Um, From what? England, right? I think so. No, it's, it's not. It's Chelsea, no. <laughs> Liverpool. I can't remember. <laughs> it's Liverpool. It's Liverpool. I think. It's Liverpool. Yeah, it's Liverpool. Okay. okay. okay of course. Yeah, yeah. Who is your favorite team? My favorite team, oh, I'll go with uh, City now. Okay, tell me five players from City. Uh, Mares, Haaland, Gundogan, De Bruyne. Yeah, I've, I've done five now, no? No. No. And um, I will go for... Um, oh, I don't know, I'm bugging as well. Uh, the one... Um, yeah, the... Done. <laughs> <laughs> the last question was, was crazy. Oh. 3,570. You want another try? Yeah, I'm good. That, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, tell me five players from AG Auxerre back then. Whoa. First team or? Philippe Maxes, Boom yeah. Song, uh, Lachoué. Capo. Et Sissé. Okay, done. Guys, it was a pleasure to have you in the podcast. Thanks for having us. Two ex-football players with different backgrounds. So many inspiration during this podcast. Thank you so much. If you want to watch another episode of Podball, click in the square right here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I see you next time for the next episode. Bra. Bra. <laughs>